In this video, we will talk about the retinal detachment. Normally, as we all know, the eye has three layers. The outermost is the sclera, the inner to it is the choroid, and the innermost layer of the eye is the retina. On this layer, that is the retina, the light is focused to form the image. The retina is mainly divided into two layers. The outer is the retinal pigment epithelium, and inner to the retinal pigment epithelium is the sensory retina. Now, what is a retinal detachment? Retinal detachment refers to the separation of the retinal pigment epithelium from the sensory retina. That is, the two layers of the retina separate from each other, resulting in the retinal detachment. The types of the retinal detachment include the rigmatogenous retinal detachment. In this, a tear develops in the sensory retina, which allows the fluid to seep through it, detaching it from the underlying retinal pigment epithelium. The next is the tractional retinal detachment. It results from the fibrous scar tissue which forms in the eye due to the vitreal hemorrhage or diabetic retinopathy. The scar tissue exerts pulling force on the sensory retina, detaching it from the retinal pigment epithelium. The next is the mixed type. It has the components of both the rigmatogenous and the traction type. The last type is the exudative retinal detachment. It results from the formation of serous fluid under retina from choroid due to uvites or macular degeneration, resulting in the retinal detachment. The causes include aging. It is the most common cause of the rigmatogenous retinal detachment. As the person gets older, the vitreous in the eye may change in texture and may shrink. Sometimes as it shrinks, the vitreous can pull on the retina and tear it. The next is the diabetic retinopathy. It is the most common cause of traction retinal detachment. Diabetic retinopathy damages the blood vessels in the retina and can scar the retina. As the scars get bigger, they can pull on the retina and detach it from the back of the eye. Tumors in the eye, injury or trauma to the eye, uvites, previous retinal detachment in one eye, macular degeneration, and previous eye surgery. The clinical manifestations in retinal detachment include seeing cobwebs, sensation of shade or curtain coming across the vision, sudden onset of a large number of floaters. These are the small dark spots or lines that float across your vision, bright flashing lights, and blurred vision. The diagnosis of retinal detachment involves visual acuity tests to determine the visual acuity of the patient. Optical coherence tomography. It allows for visualization of microscopic changes in the retina, including small amounts of exudate underneath the retina. Slit lamp biomicroscopy. It is a microscope with a bright light used during an eye exam. It gives a closer look at the different structures at the front of the eye and inside the eye. The next is the stereo fundus photography. It involves photographing the rear of the eye. The next is the fluorescein angiography. In this, a dye is injected into the vein and then a camera-like device takes pictures as the dye moves through the blood vessels in the back of the eye. Ultrasound may also be used, especially if the view is blocked due to hemorrhage in the vitreous. There is no medical management of the retinal detachment. The definitive management of the retinal detachment is the surgical intervention. The first surgical intervention is the scleral buckling. In this, the retinal surgeon compresses the sclera often with a scleral buckle or a silicon band to indent the scleral wall from the outside of the eye and bring the two retinal layers in contact with each other. The next surgical intervention is the vitrectomy. During this procedure, the surgeon uses small instruments to cut the vitreous and suction it out. Then the doctor does any other needed repairs like repairing a hole in the retina. The surgeon may also place air or other gas in your eye to help the retina stay in proper position. In cryopexy, the surgeon uses a special probe to apply intense cold energy to freeze the retina around the scar. This creates a swelling that becomes scar tissue, sealing the retina back to the wall of the eye. In photocoagulation, the laser is used. The laser emits a beam of light that travels through the eye and burns the area around the retinal tear or detachment to create a scar. This scar tissue helps seal the tear or reattach a detached portion of the retina to the underlying tissue. The nursing management involves preparing the patient for surgery, like instructing the patient to remain quiet in the prescribed position, patching both the eyes of the patient, Washing the patient's face with antibacterial solution to decrease the contamination, instructing the patient not to touch the eyes to avoid contamination, and administering the pre-operative medications as prescribed by the surgeon. The measures to prevent the post-operative complications include cautioning the patient to avoid bumping head, 
encouraging the patient not to cough or sneeze or to perform other strain inducing activities that will increase the intraocular pressure and detach the retina again administering the medications for pain nausea and vomiting as prescribed advising the patient to avoid rapid eye movements for several weeks after surgery and advising the patient to follow up thank you that was all about the retinal detachment